Hi everyone, Mary at Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. There we go. Sorry. Adjusting the camera. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you're all doing well. Today is a variety. I'm going to do some wax paper, more wax paper, glassine type uh, technique I came up with as I was trying to uh, clear up my little wax paper scraps. So I came up with a bunch of little things that um, kind of resemble glassine. I'll get to that in a second. I've spent most of the week coming up with ideas of things I would like to do for my craft show. I thought you might like to um, see that and give me a few I would like some uh, help on one particular thing. So my high ticket item is probably going to be something with shaped flowers. I make these and put them in shadow box type things. And this is one of the ones I have uh, that was done on a tag. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do uh, note cards because this is one of my favorite types of cards to make. So I have some, I took, took some time to create some bases here that aren't finished. I would really like to do something with my handmade paper. Uh, this is another version of the shaped flowers. I'm going to do something with these, the Mamagami paper. And bookmarks, and this is my low ticket item. Uh, magnets, refrigerator magnets, because my daughter can help me do these and we can make a bunch of these in no time. And there might be kids there. My other, I watch these craft show videos all the time and treat type things are always a good seller. I have a feeling the crowd is going to be more pink strawberries, if you know who I'm referring to, than artsy. So I would like to do some things like this, but I ran into a problem almost immediately. And that is the majority of my paper is single sided, aside from Graphic 45, Stamperia, and Tim Holtz. And this is the only other set of paper I have that doesn't crack or that's double-sided. So if you can recommend a double-sided brand of paper that doesn't crack and has more of pattern type selections than I don't want Stamperia, I don't want Graphic 45, although they do have patterns, and I don't want Tim Holtz. This is Waylene, but the selections that they have available right now really aren't what I'm looking for, so even though I like the paper and it doesn't crack, um, I just, I, I don't like their particular patterns. And I'm looking for patterned type paper in a variety of colors and styles. Okay, so let's get to this. In this experiment, 
I had a dumb moment. I really like this bag. It uses my Momogami flowers. It's not strong enough. So I thought, well, maybe I could just double the paper, double the wax paper. And that's what I did. And it turned out, and it's much stronger, and it's not going anywhere. And I also thought this kind of looks like frosted glass or ice. So maybe for a winter journal or a Christmas ornament, I could come up with something to do something with crumpled wax paper. So that's what led to this, to these. They're actually pretty stiff. They kind of feel like laminated. They kind of feel laminated. But in my humble opinion, I think what is probably going to show up better, especially when you have an image, is probably something like a silhouette. So I got some of my die cuts, butterflies, bird, and I'm going to use that today. These are much, or even something like this, stamped. Stamped and fussy cut butterflies. So with this technique, it goes a lot faster. You don't have to wait quite as long to let it dry than the previous wax paper techniques. So I have one here that's um, dry enough. I have my Sizzix here. I have my wax paper. And someone asked for the embellishments, what side of wax paper I laid atop the image, and it was this type of wax paper. It's wax on each side. I was not using deli paper or parchment paper. I was using regular wax paper. So that answers that. So what I did, this one is a triple layer. So what I did, I got my glue. I'll show you how I glued it in a minute. And then I ran it through the Sizzix, which I have my Sizzix here, and I'm going to stand up and run it through for you. I'm not going to bring my Sizzix over because my space on this table is limited, but I'm going to show you that I um, I have a sandwich in there just because if I get a glue squirt, I don't want it messing up my plates. And I have it uh, triple layer so that I can get a good press. So I'm just going to run this through. I'm standing up here. Let me move my coffee. And hopefully Hopefully my glue wasn't, um, no, my glue is not totally dry. So there's my little specimen, specimen type thing. When it was completely dry, I just trimmed, trimmed the edges so it was square. If it's not dry, it doesn't work very well in the 
guillotine or the trimmer because what it's it acts like wet paper and it will tear. So wait until it's completely dry. So I'm going to show you the assembly. And these are the types of scraps I had lying here in my what I call my to-do pile. And that has to be cleared off. That has to be cleared off this week, that's for sure. Because my table is getting crowded. So I just crumbled it up. Hopefully this piece is big enough. If not, I'm going to use a bigger one or cut a bigger one. And I think I might because there's not enough space around there. i just do a bigger one. So yeah, I think a silhouette will probably end up working better. And then I just folded it. And this I'm using the same glue. Linico. Linico book binding glue. I didn't experiment with this one with different types of glues. And this one is much easier. Because it's pretty easy to spread and my glue bottle is my glue is really low I should have filled up my glue my glue is low and then I just placed that image there I didn't worry about putting glue on top of the image but you can And then that was it. Ran it through the press and then trimmed it up as I wanted. For the bag, just gonna let that sit a moment. For the bag, I have the paper. And this is as wide as the paper. Here's the trimmed edge of the paper. And I just fold it once. Fold it once, fold it twice, and there's the shape of my bag. Crumbled it up. Make sure I get enough, enough wrinkles in there. Evenly distributed. Still see my fold lines. And then I'm trying to remember here. Yes. Trying to remember where I how I place the images. Okay, there we go. Up here. Up 
or the flowers, I mean, up here. Have your um, and I think maybe this one I also put the glue here. I'm wiping my hands. Just place my flowers. My momagami flowers because they are very thin like tissue paper. I just back them, lightly tack them on a white copy paper before I punch them out to give them oh I, I didn't realize that. I thought I checked all those. Oh well. I'm going to have some lettering on the back of one. Or I just won't use that one. And I place my flowers. I have enough glue there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I put glue down this side as well. Yeah. See, this was quick. <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, doubling the paper to whatever size bag, envelope, specimen you would like. Hold it over. Hold it over. There we go. If you wanted, you could also do this side with the flowers. I didn't, but I, you know, I might because you can still see them through the back. So I don't know how much you care about that. Okay. So that's basically all I did was double the paper. If you wanted this to be a little more sturdy, just do another layer. I don't have enough paper there. Just do another layer. See, I'm running out of glue. big bottle here somewhere. <gasps> That's way too much. <laughs> That's way too much. Okay. Get it all in there and then wipe some off. That's what I'll do. It's gonna squirt. I know that. No. Well, there's nothing there to tear because there's no. It, 
it works a little differently going wax paper to wax paper than it does wax paper to image to paper. Don't have to worry about it quite as much. Okay, so I'll run this through the press first then. I still don't think that's completely dry. It feels cool. So that's how your image would come out and then I wait for it to dry completely and then trim it. I'll just run this through. I'm going to um, stand up. Run this through, even it up a little bit. here. These aren't big enough to prevent a glue squirt, but it's a little, there's not enough pressure, so I'm using a shim. and then I glued up my seams. I personally like to use the embossing folder and that's another thing because it was doubled. I didn't have to worry so much about tearing the wax paper so that was another good thing. For the envelope, obviously I didn't use a, a embossing folder, but it's just glued. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's kind of like my little bag here. It's glued at the sides, and aside from tearing apart, the glue isn't coming loose. So I just took some little um, little ephemera type. I took some little stamps and I scattered them through there. Little things like that. Stamps. That'll be up to your imagination. What you want to press between them. Leaves would look lovely. Dried Pressed flowers would look lovely. So then um, I just assembled my bag. That's just basically like a new sheet of paper that you would use however you would use it. But in my humble opinion, I think if I were to do it, to do an ornament or something, I would probably go with something that's more of a silhouette type image than a detail type image. Or I would choose dark colors because as you can see, the red shows up better than the pink. That's not too bad, but I personally think the silhouette type images are a lot better for this type of thing. So that's why I grabbed some butterflies, birds. So that's, let me run this through. Hopefully this is explanatory enough because um, I really 
prefer to spend the rest of my day crafting than doing a video. But it was just another experiment. That's how I approach things. I like to um, explore. See, I got a glue squirt. I like to explore um, the mediums just like I would as if I were. Oh, wow, I got a major glue squirt. Just like if I were. Um, painting or something. I would like to explore my paper, explore my brushes, explore my watercolors. And that way when I begin a painting or something, I know what what watercolors, what brushes, what paper is going to give me the result that I want. So that's just how I approach things. And I don't see paper crafting similar to the paper cracking. I don't see paper crafting as being any different. And I, or mixed media or anything else, I like to explore and learn the medium before I, that's part of the fun. And um, when I do begin something, I won't have to be disappointed. I already know if it's going to work or if it's not going to work. Hi everyone, me again. I accidentally forgot to delete a previous video so I ran out of space so I'm tacking a little uh, on the end here of my last comment and if you have any scrapbook paper type suggestions I would truly appreciate it if you have any helpful craft show item suggestions. I would appreciate it. Thank you for the kind comments on the previous videos. Unkind comments get deleted in my philosophy as long as I'm not committing a sin there is nothing I have to feel bad about. And living up to my own ex expectations is hard enough, let alone trying to live up to yours. So there's nothing I have to be made to feel bad about, including my voice, my persona, how I do videos. This is new to me. It wouldn't be my first choice of how I would teach a class. I have taught watercolor before in person. It wouldn't be my first choice of how to interact with people. But it is what it is, and it's part of the new economy. I don't have to like it. That's just the reality of today's world. and. I do the best I can. So have a good day, everyone. I'll see you next time. I hope you learned enough to find this helpful, and I will be back next time. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye.